Hello everyone, in this video I am going to derive an expression for the centroid or the center of mass of a triangle. Now I just want to say from the outset that the way I'm going to do this is not necessarily the most direct or conceptually straightforward method because I'm going to use a couple of tricks along the way. Um, but as I hope you'll agree if you, if you watch through the whole video, uh, it's quite an elegant method and once we've done all the initial setup things do fall into place very nicely. Um, so with that said, let's get on with the derivation. As you can see, I've got my triangle diagram uh, up on the screen and I've labeled um, A, B and C, uh, labeled as A, B and C, the three vertices of the triangle. So those A, B and C um, labels that I put on, those are the position vectors of the three vertices. Okay, now let's just write down the definition of the centroid or center of mass for a, a sort of continuous uh, body like this one. So I'm going to call it R0, uh, and it's the integral of position vector R dA, where dA is a little area element of the shape, and that is then divided by the total area of the shape, which I'm going to call capital A. So for this video, I'm not going to attempt to explain why it's defined in this way. We're just going to take this as a, as a definition. Now, in order to actually evaluate that integral uh, on the top there, we're going to have to introduce a coordinate system. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to draw some coordinate axes and I'm going to put uh, one coordinate axis basically along the side of the triangle that runs from point A to point B and I'm going to call that the U axis. Um, and I'm going to define U to be a fractional coordinate in the sense that it runs from a value of 0 at the base of that arrow up to a value of 1 at the tip of, of this arrow. Then I'm going to introduce a second coordinate axis, which I'm going to call the v-axis, uh, which goes from point A of the triangle up to point C of the triangle. So there's the, uh, the v-axis, and again, it's going to run, the v-coordinate will run from uh, 0 at the base of that uh, arrow up to a value of 1 uh, at point C. So these are called the UV coordinates of the triangle. I think these are, are used in computer graphics, for example, but they're, they're going to uh, be, be quite useful for this problem as well. Now, um, what we need to do is think about what the area element for this problem actually looks like. So I'm going to add uh, a couple of extra lines to my diagram. Now, think for a moment about what a line of constant U would look like. So a line of constant U would be parallel to the v-axis, and so a line of constant u might look something like that, right? It's supposed to be parallel to the v-axis. And then if we were to draw another uh, line of constant u at a slightly higher value of u, it would look um, like that, right? It would just be closer to the, the far end of that u-axis. Okay, now um, that means we've got this little um, sort of fractional distance, which I'm going to call du as like a small increment of, of u between uh, those two parallel lines. Similarly, if we were to draw lines of constant v, they would be parallel to the u axis. Okay, and so if I drew, uh, let's draw one line, I'll try to make it parallel to the u axis, and then I'll draw another one, which is a little bit, uh, has a slightly higher value of v, it would look like that. And again, we could say uh, there is a little fractional distance there which I could call dv, a small increment in v. And our area element, the dA uh, in that integral up at the top there, is basically going to be this little parallelogram in the middle, right, where the du and the, the dv um, bits sort of intersect each other. So um, let's say, okay, this is, this is dA. Now, how can I actually express dA in terms of du and dv? Well, it's actually uh, easier than you might think if you use a little bit of uh, geometrical intuition. So um, notice that the shape of that parallelogram, it's basically, right, imagine extending your full triangle into a parallelogram, which would look something like, um, like this, right? The little shaded parallelogram, which is our area element, is like a scaled down version of that big parallelogram, right? It's, it's, it's a similar shape because it has all the same angles. Um, and so first thing that we could do is say, well, dA, a little area element, um, we could start by saying it's proportional to twice the area of the triangle, right? So I'm going to write down 2A because the big parallelogram that I've, I've drawn with the, the dashed lines, right, has twice the area of the triangle that we're actually looking at. So we can start by saying 2A and then we just need to know what the scale factor is that takes us from the big parallelogram to the little tiny parallelogram. And 
uh, we can essentially just multiply that by du because uh, the scale factor on the u axis is du. Um, and then we also multiply it by dv because the scale factor on the v axis is just dv. This is because um, we defined u and v to run from zero to one, right? So it really tells us the scale factor. Okay. So um, that means conveniently because the dA, right, has an A in it, um, our centroid integral is actually just, uh, I'm going to write this with two integral signs now because we're, we're doing a, an area integral. It's two times the position vector r du dv because essentially this a uh, in our area element cancelled with that a in the denominator there. Um, right, so let's use column vector notation at this point. So it's, it's a double integral um, and the position vector is just u in the u direction and v in the v direction. And this factor of two means that we can write our column vector as 2u, 2v, like this, um, du, dv. Right, so there you go. We've, we've expressed our, our integral. This, uh, the, the region over which we're integrating is just the whole triangle, right? Um, now, you could just go ahead and do this area integral, but here's where I'm going to use a little trick. I am going to use Green's theorem. I'm just going to write down Green's theorem here and think about uh, why it's useful. So Green's theorem says that the integral of some function L with respect to U plus some function M um, with respect to V, where L and M can be functions of U and V, right? So we're integrating around a closed loop in an anti-clockwise direction. Um, so Green's theorem relates that to an area integral, and it says that it's equal to uh, the integral over the area enclosed by this curve of uh, the following combination of derivatives, dm by du minus uh, dl by dv, du dv. So essentially what I'm going to do is apply Green's theorem sort of backwards to this area integral over here, turn it into a line integral around the outside of the triangle. Okay. Um, so we've got to define our sort of integration path. Let's start at point A, go anti-clockwise from A to B to C. And so we're going to integrate along, uh, basically along the u-axis. I'm going to call that sort of part one of the integral. Then we're going to integrate from B to C. I'm going to call that part two of the integral. And then we're going to integrate from C back to A, which predictably I am going to call um, part three of the integral. <clears throat> now, uh, let's think about what happens when we um, do our uh, sort of transformation from the area integral to the line integral, right? So um, going back to this, this previous line, we basically need to know what the L and the M are that, that we have to use in order to make this all work out. So firstly, let's just write down, it is a, a line integral. So what does the integrand have to be? Well, essentially we are identifying this area integral with this area integral. If you look at the U component first, the top component, which is 2U, we are basically saying that 2U is the same as all of that, right? dm by du minus dl by dv. Um, so what you could do is choose dm by du to just be uh, 2u, which means m itself should be u squared, right? Because if you differentiate u squared, you just get 2u. Um, therefore, what I can do is put u squared dv as the upper component of my line integral here, right? It's dv instead of du because on the left-hand side of Green's theorem, the m goes with dv rather than with du. Similarly, by a very similar logic, uh, we are going to put minus v squared du as our um, bottom component of, uh, of, of this line integral. The minus sign just comes from the fact that we've got a minus sign in front of dl by dv. But other than that, the, the logic is, is identical. So, okay, going back to the three different parts of the, of the uh, line integral, right? On section one of that line integral, if you think about it, the V coordinate is always zero because you're just going along the U axis. Now, because the V coordinate is always zero, right? Um, v is equal to zero, but DV is also equal to zero because you're not changing the V coordinate, which means both components of that line integral um, just vanish. And so we get the zero vector when we integrate along that part of the, uh, of the curve. So there is no contribution to the integral from part one. You can actually do a very similar thing for, for part three, because when you integrate along part three, 
um, you're integrating along the line of u equals zero, right? So u is zero, du is also zero. So again, both components of that line integral vanish. You don't get any contribution there. So the interesting stuff is going to happen on part two of the curve, which is the line that connects b to c. Now, um, we need to know the relationship between u and v along part two of our integration curve, right? Now, it's a straight line going from b to c. Um, so it's going to have some sort of linear equation. Um, and uh, let's think about the coordinates. If we just imagine for a moment that a is the origin, right? That means the coordinates of b would be 1 in the u direction and 0 in the v direction. And the coordinates of c um, would be 0 in the u direction and 1 in the v direction. Okay. Again, because I defined the scales to run from 0 to 1 on each axis. Um, and because it's a straight line, straight line, hopefully you can take a moment to convince yourself that the equation of uh, the line connecting B and C is just u plus v equals 1. Right? So u plus v equals 1, just using the fact that it's a straight line and it connects up 0, 1, and, and 1, 0. Right? If u plus v is 1, by differentiating that equation, um, I just find that du is equal to minus dv. Um, and so let's go back and substitute uh, those results into our integral. So our centroid r naught is the integral um, over just sort of part two of the curve of minus u squared du, right? I have put a minus sign there because we changed that dv into a du and we said there's a minus sign relating those. And the bottom is going to be uh, v squared dv. Again, we changed that du into a dv and flipped the, the sign. And the limits of integration, where we're going from point B to point C, so we're going from coordinates 1, 0 um, to coordinates 0, 1. We could change the sign of the u part of the integral by flipping the u coordinates around, right? So all I mean by that is um, change the limits to 0, 0 and 1, 1. Um, and that's going to have the effect of removing the minus sign in the u component. So it's going to be u squared du um, v squared um, dv. All I've done is take that one and that zero and just flip them around, which changes the sign of the integral. And at this point, now we've got some really easy integrals to do, right? Because they're both just, you know, when you integrate u squared with respect to u, you get u cubed over three. Same for v, of course. And then you just substitute the values in, you get a third for both components. Okay, so yeah, a, th a third on the top and a third on the bottom as well, uh, which means I can write my result in the following way, u plus v as vectors divided by 3, where I'm defining the u and v vectors to just be the vector from a to b and from a to c respectively, right? So the vector sort of aligned along those coordinate axes. Um, before I just get to the final result of the video, I just want to point out um, what this sort of means geometrically. Note that u plus v, right, so uh, if, we, if we basically add together the vectors from a to b and from a to c, that would be, um, let me do this in a different uh, color, the vector u plus v would get us all the way to the opposite side, so the opposite vertex of that big parallelogram, right? And so the centroid is a third of the way along that blue line that I've just drawn, um, or equivalently, because the triangle is half of the parallelogram, that means the centroid is two thirds of the way um, from the vertex A uh, to the sort of opposite side, side BC of the triangle. Just to finish off, let's write our result in terms of the original coordinates A, B, and C. Right, so I'm going to do this over at the bottom left uh, corner here. Our centroid R naught is going to be, well, the vector U goes from A to B, so it's B minus A. The vector v goes from a to c, so it's c minus a, so you b minus a plus c minus a, divide that by 3. But then remember, until now, we've been sort of assuming that a is the origin. If a is not the origin, we just have to add on the position vector of a um, to, to get our final result, right? Now, because you've got minus 2a on the numerator of that fraction, and this a here is basically 3a over 3, this all simplifies um, to the very nice symmetrical result a plus b plus c all divided by 3. 
Um, so there you go. This is maybe a little bit surprising because it's basically saying the centroid is the same as what you would get if you just had sort of three point masses, um, thinking in terms of physics, three point masses um, at each of the coordinates A, B, and C. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting. I hope it's been fun. Um, I am planning to do another video at some point about the moment of inertia of a triangle using a very similar method to, to this video. So if this has been interesting, do keep a lookout for that. And yeah, I will see you again soon.